Hey everyone, it's Tommy from the Goalie Crease Network and today we're going to go over goalie stick care and how to tape your goalie stick. So let's get started. Now if you've already been playing goalie, I think it's extremely important to use a guide stick. And that would be the stick that you used before. And what you can do is you can use that stick to base your new decisions off of. If you want to change anything, if you need to add additional tape in certain areas, and that will really guide you in what you're doing for your new stick. So, this is the stick that I've mostly been using for the past month or so. Uh, a little bit on and off. If you've been watching my personal videos, you know that I use a lot of different sticks and I'm trying different things out. So, this one is one that I've been using on and off for a while. The things I really like about it, I use a half inch butt end, and that's NHL legal, and in white tape, I always prefer that. And one little tidbit there, don't use dark tape, or especially black tape, because a ref might mistake it for a puck. And if it goes inside your net, and it's a close play, he may mistake that for a puck, and now you have a goal against. So, always use white tape. Another thing I like to use are these ribs. And I put five ribs going all the way down, and it fits my fingers very nicely. And that gives me a couple things. First of all, obviously grip. If I'm in my blocker and I'm able to put my fingers in between those holes, I get very good grip that way. Now, another thing I really like is that it gives me a tactile response. So when I go for a poke check and I'm going out, when I start to feel those ribs, I know that that's when I need to grip. So, there's a couple really good reasons for that, and I know it doesn't work for everyone, but I really prefer that. The next part of the stick that is extremely important to read is, of course, the blade. And this is going to be a little bit difficult for you guys to see on the blade here, since it's navy uh, tape here, but you can see most of the puck marks tend to be in the middle to this end on the heel, and a little bit up, and that's exactly where you want them to be. The reason for that is, if you're getting too many puck marks down here, you're probably not getting very good leverage on those shots. You have to be very strong, and if that shot comes and hits you right here, it's probably going to flip your stick backwards, and that could end up in a goal or a really bad rebound. So you want to make sure that the vast majority of your puck marks are in about the first half, and especially the first quarter of your stick. Now, reading the blade is not just about the puck marks, but also the wear marks on the blade. So. For example, you can see a little bit here, there's a little bit of a wear mark. I probably should cover that up with some tape. And if I turn this around, you can see that the blade right here is getting a lot of wear. And if you've ever seen me play on my personal videos, you know that that's the way I play. My heel tends to be on the ice quite a bit. So I'm not at all surprised that I'm getting a lot of wear on those areas. And it would probably be very smart for me to go ahead and run a piece of tape, especially through the first half, but probably all the way to the end. Now, another part about the blade I really like, and I started doing this in the past year or so, is doing more of a forward style tape, and that goes all the way to the end, and then what I do is I take some scissors, and I go ahead and snip all the way off, and then I press in, and it makes a very nice and tight blade, and that way I get a lot of consistency all the way from the heel to the toe when I shoot those pucks. And that's extremely important for me, um, and so I really wanna keep that going forward. So, now that we've read the stick, let's go ahead and make a couple changes here and there, and we'll do a new stick. So here's two brand new sticks, and what I always like to do is decide which one goes next by the weight. And so, for example, this one, in my opinion, is a little bit on the lighter side, whereas this one tends to be a little bit heavier. So, we're going to go ahead and tape this one up today, and I'm going to put this one back. And as you can see, these have never been used. There's no butt end. The blade is absolutely perfect. And in fact, it still has the little Tommy Ames sticker over there. So we're gonna go ahead and tape this up and we're gonna get our tools ready. So the first thing, again, white tape up top. You don't want that to be mistaken for a puck. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my white tape out. And then I'm gonna get out a couple tools that I like to use. And number one is a ruler that is clear. And that way I can make an accurate measurement of a half inch and then scissors because I don't like to rip the tape um, and I think it's much cleaner this way. So we're gonna go ahead and get started and I'm gonna speed up the video because this takes me a while because I am very particular about making sure that it's completely straight. So here we go.
Okay, so that's a half inch. Let's go ahead and cut it here. Let's see if I can do this so it doesn't screw it up. And neatly tuck it in. Usually I try to tuck it in towards the back and then I compact it down a little bit more and that way it makes a very nice and extremely straight butt end. So we're done with the butt end even though that took a while, but that's okay. All right, so next up we're gonna do the ribs that are up here. And again, we're gonna do five ribs and I'm gonna use my guide stick to try to determine the distance between each of those ribs and make sure that it's pretty consistent. So here we go. So here's my navy blue tape for the ribs. And the first thing we're going to do is take off two little slivers of this to keep down the ribs while I'm taping it. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get a little bit of tape off. I'm gonna take my scissors here and this part doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but just a little bit, about that amount, right there. And I'm gonna split it in two. So these are going to keep down the ribs once I go ahead and make them. So I'm gonna put them up here for now. So now we need to make some tape to do the ribs. And what we're going to do here, I'm going to set down my stick for a second, and I'm going to go ahead and put this up here, curl it around, and I'm going to get a pretty good amount here of tape, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it, and then we're going to twist it up. And we're just going to start twisting. Roll it on up so it's pretty tight. There we go. Nice and tightly wound. And this is going to become our rib. So what we're gonna do here is take one of these little slivers. And what I'm gonna do here is, again, I'm gonna use that guide stick to make sure that I'm putting it in the right spots. So here's my guide stick. And it looks like I typically start on the back of the stick right here towards the back. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure I'm getting the right distance. And I'm going to go ahead and put the first part of that rib here. And I'm going to go ahead and sticky it down. And then I'm going to make sure from the back, one, two, three, four, five. And again, I end on the back of the stick. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these back. And let's see here. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And we're gonna make sure that they are an appropriate distance and I like, to, I like to put it up a little bit so that it faces up and back and that's because that's the way your hand goes when you're in this position. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that they are a good distance between each other. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use my second sticker here to make sure it stays down while I cut it. Oh, one more quick thing. I just noticed on my guide stick that I actually wrap it around one more time. So I'm just gonna make sure that it's consistent. And that way it has five on the back, but it ends up on the back of the stick. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that's an appropriate distance. I'm actually gonna unwind it here a little bit. And this is one of those parts where I'm very particular in the way that I do my sticks. So I'm just gonna make sure that this is perfect because if it's not perfect, I'll just have to redo it later because it's gonna drive me nuts. So, I'm gonna make sure that this is appropriate again. There we go. Make sure that, that one's facing up. Looks pretty perfect from the back here. Getting better in the front. And then it ends up top. So, I'm just gonna make sure here. And you can see how long this takes me to do, just to make sure that it's perfect. And you know, all of us goalies, we have to make sure that these things are perfect. I'm sure we're all the same there. So, looks like that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reattach that little bit of a stickiness, just to 
keep it in place while I'm taping it and go ahead and make my last cut. So here we go. And this one's always a little bit harder because you're going through a rolled tape. So we have our excess there. Go ahead and put that down. And this is what it looks like before you tape it. Now, contrary to what I just showed you, um, interestingly, I'm not very particular when it comes to the actual taping of this section. So I'll kind of show you that here in a second once I make sure that this is perfect yet again. Okay, here we go. And I'm just going to use my regular tape yet again. I'm going to make sure that it covers both the stickiness in the back and all the ribs. I'm going to start on the back and I'm just going to go on up. This part's going to get pretty well used so it's not really going to matter if you make sure this part's perfect or not. It's going to get screwed up regardless. And last but not least I always make sure every bit of that sticker and the stick is covered. So there we go. Use my scissors here. Perfect line. And make sure that it looks good. So here we go. Grip it. Press it on down. Make sure that all the ribs are showing and that they're appropriately placed. And now we have a very nicely ribbed stick up here. Perfect for my fingers. So now that we have that section, we have all of the butt end done, we can go ahead and go to the blade and make a couple changes depending on what happened with the guide stick. So just to reiterate a couple things that we found when we were looking at our guide stick in order to read it and see what kinds of changes we should make, let's go ahead and look at that guide stick one more time. So if you remember back, we had a little bit of wear right here, a little bit of wear on the bottom and quite a bit of wear here in the back. And of course, if you've seen my style, you know that this is the section that tends to hit the ice the most. So that's probably why. Now, it would probably be pretty smart of me to go ahead and put some tape, just one little line going all the way to the end here. And so I think we're gonna try that out today. It's not something that I've done before, but we're gonna go ahead and try that out. So I'm gonna get one strand of tape off and we're gonna see how this works out for me. Okay, so we got our navy blue tape again. And what we're gonna do here, put one strand of tape all the way down the blade of the stick. I'm gonna start pretty well at the toe and go pretty much till the end. And of course I use a heel curve, so it's going to be a little difficult for me. So I'm gonna see if I can get this perfect here. And this is just gonna add another layer of protection against the ice and against shots. And that way I can make sure that these sticks stay a little more durable than they probably would otherwise. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop right about there. I'll take my scissors here. And make sure that I get a really nicely clean cut. There we go. Put these back in my pocket. And we're gonna make sure, you know, we can see that it came up there at the end. We're gonna make sure that we get that back down. So we have that nicely smooth stick going all the way down and then start from the top and start going down and that way we make sure that everything stays consistent and you don't get any bubbles in it we're going to do the same thing on this side start at the top and then go down there we go there's our little extra layer of protection here. Now, for me, as you can see on that guide stick, typically I don't start my tape jobs till about right here. And for this one, because it would drive me nuts if I don't, I'm gonna go ahead and try to start it all the way back here. Now, what we do is we always start our tape jobs from the heel to the toe. The reason why, well, it's mostly hockey tradition. Um, there are some pretty good theories out there um, for why forwards do that and why defensemen do it. Um, because that's the way that they're usually um, pushing the puck. But for us goalies, that's probably a little less important. But at the same time, it's hockey tradition, so I just stick to it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start right here at the heel. And we're going to go to the toe. So let's get started. Now, 
I always like to start on the back of the stick right here because that is the area where you are least likely to get impacts. So that way it's less likely to screw up my tape job. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it down here. And usually I start up top, but we're gonna start it down here today. And come around here and make sure that, that tape gets fully covered. And the back is less important to me at least so I just make sure that the front is perfect and that the back looks pretty good. So we can see here, we're already getting a really nice tape job. I like this already. Sometimes it's just not your day and you end up with a really junky tape job and you're like, well, I guess I'll just redo it tomorrow because this would drive me nuts. Can't play with a bad tape job. And then of course in pregame, it's pretty, uh, pretty often that your brand new tape job is going to get screwed up in pregame. But I have a couple tips here and there. That I think will help you out with that as well. So, I'm just gonna keep going here all the way down. I don't overlap too much of the tape, and that's just personal preference. You can try to overlap it all if you'd like, it might make it a little more durable at the same time you're using more tape, which does increase weight. Now, you will notice increases in weight with tape. If I don't have tape on this, I definitely notice. If I do have tape on it, I definitely notice, and if I have too much tape, it just drives me nuts. So I just make sure I have a really nice tape job that uses the least amount of tape. Almost done here. Now we're getting towards the toe. And again, I want to remind you that I go all the way past the toe very similar to how a Ford does it. And that way, the feel of the puck and the way that the puck comes off of my stick is very consistent. I get a really nice stickiness to all of the tape and it doesn't end up coming off at a weird angle. Now, I kind of see I screwed up a little bit. I was going a little fast there. I want to make sure I get this perfect because that would drive me nuts if I don't. So here we go, and we're to the toe, and now that we're at the toe, it's going to start bubbling up a little bit. So what I like to do here, this is probably the last time I'm going to be able to go actually over the toe perfectly, but we can start to see we're getting a little bubbling up there. This is when you go past the toe a little bit, and now I'm actually going to wrap back around and get a little more tape here. And I'm gonna make sure that this part is perfect, but that it keeps the same approximate pattern that I've been doing. But I go past the toe and make sure that's flat. And we're gonna do the same for the back. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this or not, but I'll go ahead and make a little bit of a extra part here. There we go. Connect those two together. And now I can make one of my final incisions. I have my scissors in my pocket here. There we go. Alright, so this is what it ends up looking like. And this is a darn good paint job if I or a darn good tape job, if I may say myself. And now that we have that extra, we're just going to go ahead and take the scissors and make sure that we can get it as perfect as possible. And let's be honest, it never looks perfect. And that kind of drives me nuts. But at the same time, you know, this is about the best uh, kind of tape job that I found performs the best for me. So this is definitely what I recommend. At least try it out. I've had a lot of success with uh, the accuracy of my passes and my shots after this. Go ahead and make sure that I get as close to the blade as possible. There we go. Got a little bit of excess. And now, you can kind of see it's a little bit rigid, so I'm just going to go ahead and pat that down a little bit. Doesn't look too bad. 
There we go. Now a lot of goalies, they'll stay right here and this is their perfectly done stick. I like to use a couple more tools and those are wax and a puck. Now, your way of doing this might be a little bit different. Some people like to rough it up with the puck first, then apply wax, then do the puck again. What I like to do is I like to put the wax on first and then I rub that wax into my blade. And the reason for that is it gets a really nice durable uh, feel to the front of the stick and that way I don't have to tape it that often. Um, if you're one of those guys who likes to tape your stick every single time, uh, more power to you. Um, but I like to go, you know, a good two to four weeks before I have to redo a, a tape job and that's mostly because I'm old and I don't have time to do it anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and put this wax on here and this is regular stick wax. Some guys will use candle wax, some guys will use different kinds of wax. Um, I just go with this, this is easiest. So what we're gonna do here is I like to start on the bottom. Get a nice layering of wax here. All the way to the end and you're gonna get these little bubbles of wax and that's perfectly fine. And for the wax and for the puck, we always go toe to heel because we don't wanna screw up this really nice tape job that we just did. If you go the opposite direction, it can really tear up your paint job that you just did and then you have to redo it. So now that we have that, I'm gonna go ahead through the front and just a light layering. If you do it too much, then you won't get any grip on your stick at all. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just going for a little bit of wax here that'll seal in this tape job, make it more durable, and then it won't get too much water as you play your games. And we're gonna do the back. Same way, toe to heel. And I'm not sure why, but I always like to do the top two just to make sure that everything is consistent and always do the end as well because that's going to end up fraying and we want to make sure that we protect that just to make sure everything got done looks pretty good all right and put my cap on there now use a puck there's no sticker on the front or the back and i'm going to use all sides of this puck really so the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna use the rough side just to make sure that we even out all of that wax. And when you do this, you're gonna notice you now get a really nice and smooth layering of wax. And it's also going to provide a little bit of rubber at the same time. I'm gonna do it to the front as well. Again, heel to toe. Or again, toe to heel, sorry. Always do toe to heel, just to make sure that it's perfect. Make sure I got that bottom. Even out that wax there. And then of course, don't forget to do the tops and this end section. This will really nicely seal it. Okay, and that was using the rough edge of the puck. Now we're gonna flip it over and use the flat edge just to make sure that we get everything really nicely flat and well done. Again, toe to heel. On every single side of the stick. All right, we have one newly taped stick. Now it took me a little while, but nonetheless, this is the process that I use. And that way it makes that really nicely durable blade that you won't have to replace for another two to four weeks, hopefully, depending on how often you play. And we have this really nice butt end that of course has been screwed up by all the dirt on my carpet, but nonetheless, it's all flat and looks really nice. And then we have these ribs for uh, extra tactile response 
and for grip. Now, if you're one of those goalies who can go an entire year on a single stick, and so you either leave the tape on for very long amounts of time, or you do a lot of tape jobs, you're gonna end up with a lot of stickiness on your blade. And what I recommend there is actually goof off. And you have to use the spray kind because the industrial kind is way too strong and it will take off the paint. But if you use the spray type, on most sticks that I've used, it doesn't damage the uh, the feel or the protection that's on the stick. So I use that and just rub it down with a nice little cloth or a paper towel and that extra stick adhesive comes right off. So I hope that helped all of you goalies out there. I know that we all do things a little bit different and that's what makes us all unique goalies. So definitely like, comment, and subscribe and definitely join the goaliecrease.net forums and tell us what kind of tape job and stick maintenance you enjoy. So good luck out there and see you out on the ice.